And welcome back to KTN Morning Express. I'm Michael Karanja. Now, since Saturday, March the 14th, everything that has been on top of Kenyans' minds has been fuel prices. Well, I guess Kenyans have become ex expectant of dropping fuel prices given that internationally crude prices have been coming down. But on Saturday, five shilling increase, especially the super petrol, and the same goes across for diesel and kerosene. And just to help us decipher this in a more and contextualize what, is, what happened on Saturday, I am joined by Chairman of the Petroleum Institute of East Africa, Poly Kapigade. Poly Kap, let's start from the international fuel uh, crude prices. Lowest they've ever been in for a very long time, under 50, uh, about $50 a barrel. Over the last two, three months, we've seen fuel prices coming down. How does that translate? And how does that, org how did we get ourselves? How, how did oil prices end up at that $50, uh, 50, $50, $50 uh, barrel uh, price range? Good morning, Michael. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, yes, very true. Uh, fuel prices have come down. Um, the crude oil price has come down. It has rallied downwards for six months since July of last year uh, till uh, mid-January. Uh, mid um, and in mid-January, the Brent crude oil price hit $45 a barrel. But the news that was missed in Kenya, because in January is when the real steep drop came to the consumer, the pump prices, yeah. was that in mid-January the prices rallied up 30%. Actually, they moved from 45%. By beginning of February, Brent crude oil price was almost $60 a barrel. Yeah. Uh, so that 30% increase is what people are seeing at the pump, especially in respect of, of petrol um, in Kenya. Um, and also to make the point, it is not crude oil that drives your car. Um, I think this is, this is the <laughs> point I think has that, uh, that's really being missed in the debate. It is not crude oil. The price we are talking about is the price of crude oil. What you put in your car is diesel, petrol, and what you consume at home is kerosene. Now, to take crude from crude form to refined product, there is a fixed cost. Then there is freight cost. And when it lands in, our, in, our, in, our, um, in Kenya, uh, there are duties and there is wholesale margin, there is retail margin. Uh, in fact, let me put it plainly, just yeah. for, for somebody to understand. If we were given, if we had the luck of being given crude for free, and it came to Kenya for free, the lowest you'd pay in pricing would be 44 shillings a litre. Oh, but how, did, how does that translate? Because I, for the longest time, we had the Kenya, uh, the refinery working at Changamwe, but now it seems that it's become obsolete, so now we're more or less importing refined, refined uh, oil into this country. But just looking at that, how does that translate from what we have from, uh, from crude to what we finally get as refined? That's a good question. I'll t let me just explain the pricing structure. Yep. Um, the duties on a litre of fuel is 29 shillings a litre. Those are duties and taxes. They go to the government of Kenya. Road levy, duties and taxes. When, when it lands, 29 shillings a litre. Seven shillings a litre is the margin that goes to wholesalers or what you call oil marketers, okay, our members. Yeah. <laughs> they make seven shillings a litre. The person who runs a petrol station, a petrol station dealer, makes three shillings 89 cents. Let's round it off to four shillings a litre, litre. okay? Then there's a transport rebate, uh, which is another f freight cost to help you bring the fuel from Mombasa uh, inland and also into the, into, into the port in Mombasa. That's also another four shillings. So that's how I work out the 44 shillings I was talking about earlier. So in between there's 15 shillings going to someone else. So, so yes, person. so in respect, irrespective of what's happening to landed cost insurance freight cost of landing the fuel in Mombasa, yeah. that 44 is given and it's not a percentage of the price. It is actually an absolute number. Um, so, so I think that that's the dynamic and I'll tell you today um, the good news is I think people should not be really depressed. What we've seen in March is that that rally of 30% up, the price I said from 45 to 60, it's now started coming down again. So we are into low fuel prices. And even us who are oil marketers, our members at Petroleum Institute, we love low fuel prices. Yeah. Because you know what? My working capital, the amount of money I have to spend to bring fuel is much lower when the prices are lower. Yeah. So because my margin is only seven, I make better returns on investment when the, low, when the prices are low. So I think we should not get out of, our, uh, out of the good mood of saying prices are down because the fact is fuel comes all the way from Saudi and many other and, and far away geographies. Yeah. And fuel today, Michael, whichever way you look at it, is now selling at the same price or cheaper per liter and a litre of Coca-Cola, or it's comparing very well also with a litre of water or two litres of water. Yeah. So the fuel, the, our energy regulator in Kenya, 
uh, we could we could uh, we could criticize them constructively for other things but in this case we need to celebrate the pricing formula they have it is the most transparent in any geography uh, in Kenya Kenyans get their fuel cheaper and this is a fact than a South African yeah. than somebody in the UK yeah uh, somebody in in, in uh, perhaps not America now because they have found their own oil somebody in Europe we somebody in India we Kenyan consumers are getting their price at actually a very competitive uh, rate and I suspect if we go to uh, a price decontrol into the future uh, that advantage will not be passed as aggressively as the price formula has done because you go to Tanzania and look at the price per liter and go to Uganda in Uganda they're still buying fuel at 120 shillings a liter mm -hmm. uh, even even under under the current circumstances okay you can argue there is uh, there is freight freight yeah but um, I think the the uh, the, the uproar is a bit of a surprise because I think the it was uh, I it was, it was expectations. It was, it was managed. It's the perception. People are expecting the prices to come down. But if you look at diesel, which transports a lot of equipment, a lot of manufacturing uh, uh, cargo, diesel went up 60 cents. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and there was also a smaller uh, rise in, in kerosene. But you know, crude oil is a fraction. When, when refiner, refinery is just a fraction. A you, of it. You, get, you get a fraction of different products, starting with jet fuel, uh, kerosene, you get, um, you get diesel, you, you get petrol. So it's, it's good times. Let's not be depressed. About but that um, price uh, control actually worked. I know it, since its introduction, I think back in 2011, there's been a lot of people didn't really know. But I know uh, from that point, I, I think the more or less decontrolled market. I think prices were spiking here and there every other day. So does that price control bring a bit of an element of stability to how we're able to look at fuel prices month to month? Yeah, my my own reading is that the price control has really has really brought has, is really. Kenyans have benefited more under price control than the situation before. Yep. The price, the pump prices in Kenya have dropped. In fact, I can say from July, where prices were 127 shillings, to last month when they were lowest at 84 shillings a litre. I'm talking uh, petrol, petrol, unleaded petrol. Now they've just gone up to 89 shillings because the, the increase was actually 4 shillings 68 cents um, um, with this uh, over the weekend. That is a six-month consecutive drop. We it's unprecedented. I've, I've not, I'm not too much of an old man, but I can't remember <laughs> in my adult it. life when I saw prices come down six months. So that rally has actually been, and you've seen uh, what, what's also happening is the, the price has been dropping because there's been an oversupply of oil in the market. But demand has also gone up because you can tell from the traffic jams uh, in, in, in Nairobi. All over the world, demand for, for oil has also Those gone up. So the price down effect by the price oil producers has produced the impact they wanted. They wanted an increase in demand so that it could mop up the surplus that is there in the market. And when the surplus gets mopped up, prices start to come up. But what everybody, every predictor, we can't tell what will happen around the corner because we didn't expect prices to come down People as much. People hold production and then we still back at uh, 120. Yeah, yeah, we think... Um, we think we are, everybody is saying we are into low price of fuel for the next three to five years. That's what the experts are saying. But just looking at ERC, obviously ERC every month sets the maximum amount where oil marketers can sell. The other question perhaps that should be asked is how come oil marketers go for the maximum and don't play around with what else they can sell fuel at? Because when it's set at not 89 shillings and 40 cents for between now and April, why not? Why don't we find a can or a Vivo a Shell is here and there selling it at let's say 88 or 87? Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. I think that's your own marketing strategy. Yeah. There are different people who do different things. I think I've seen one of our members um, is is encourage is there are very many of our members in the Petroleum Institute who sell below the the yeah. price cap. Uh, the, the, but it depends also on your cost structure, on your brand value, on your availability, on your distribution. So that's what you do. So when you have a price cap, uh, people use different strategies. And I think the consumer is then free to choose. Um, yeah. And say, I don't, they own for 89, I want someone who's selling it at two shillings exactly. or a shilling less. Exactly. And I think that competition is aggressive. If you go to markets like Mombasa, um, it's very aggressive. Many people price much lower than the price cap uh, of, of VRC. And I can tell you that we have a very strong regulator in regulating the price 
yeah. area of uh, of of you no that, above is, it. that is a job that uh, engineer Joe Nganga and his team at the Energy Regulatory Commission are doing very well. Um, the consumers should actually celebrate the work they're doing. Right. Just looking at ERC, they always say that there's a, always a three month kind of lag between what prices prices that are international oil prices and what actually gets here. Now, just looking at that, does that talk to the kind of infrastructure that we have here, or how then does that come into play? That lag come into play? Yeah, I tell you what, I, I think that is that is the real issue moving forward. The problem is in Kenya, our stocks last us only seven days, especially now when demand is really outstripping our supply infrastructure. When I say supply infrastructure, fuel in Kenya comes to Kipevu, oil storage facility, Kosif in Mombasa. We have only one jetty at Kipevu. At the port of Mombasa, we have only one jetty, which is Kipevu, and then there is Shimanzi oil jetty, which takes smaller ships. We are only able to bring maybe 65 million liters at most or 80 million liters of fuel of a tanker. We could be bringing something larger than that. Um, therefore, we don't have the infrastructure to bring fuel yeah. to cater for the growth in the economy and the demand that we have. We also don't have storage. After we close down the refinery, um, after the refinery, the refinery can be converted to a storage. I know government is pushing for that. Uh, there are people who have come and invested in storage. We have uh, an investor in Konza, who's our member in Petro City. We have an investor in Mombasa, in VTTI, uh, who have done 110 million liters uh, of fuel. There are other people who are investing in, who private sector is starting to invest in oil storage. Yeah. But the sad thing is that these facilities have not been adopted by government as part of the common user facilities. I know it's almost at the end, but it's taking too long. If government wanted to cushion the consumer so that when prices start to come up, uh, it, it buys time for yeah. the consumer to get used to that. We've got to, the only cushion we could do is by getting storage. And we have to adopt uh, VTTI, we have to adopt Petro City, we have to adopt every other storage as part of our common user facility infrastructure to be managed by the Kenya Pipeline Company who manages the common user facilities. I think that is a policy, um, uh, that's a policy option uh, which, which is being kick-started. I'm also excited reading yeah. the new energy policy by uh, Cabinet Secretary Davis Churchill. He's done a very new, uh, an, an excellent energy policy which dictates and states that we are going to create strategic storage for Kenya. You know, we've missed the boat. Every other part of the world today is amassing. If you go to America, they used all their expensive oil and they have filled all their strategic tanks with oil at $40 a barrel, you know? Yeah. So they made it cheaper. Uh, we, we should be able to get to that because that's the only way we are going to create a buffer, a cushion for the Kenyan consumer. It's almost like what airlines do with fuel hedge where you have, where yes. you play around yes. with the prices. But yes. just looking at that kind of storage, then how, how big of an impact can it have? If massive. we have that storage infrastructure so Ma Massive. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you today, yeah. the demand the rate of evacuating from the pipeline is lower than the demand levels in the market yeah. because the pipeline is, is very constrained. It's an old pipeline. Uh, it needs to be expanded. I know Kenya Pipeline have already, they have a contractor yeah. uh, on site to do, uh, to, to expand the pipeline. We need to go to Sinan. You, we've got to go to Nanyuki. We've got to go to, uh, we, we need perhaps a bigger pipeline into Kisumu. We need to go into Western Kenya a bit more because the consumer in Western Kenya is if there's a Kenyan who suffers, is a fuel consumer in Western Kenya today. They really don't have enough uh, fuel coming, coming through to them. And, uh, and, and, and uh, we have to fast track these things. And there's one thing this country has to get right. Yep. We on average take seven years from the time we say we are going to do something to the time we do execute, it, Especially on infrastructure. I think the railway might change <laughs> all, the, all geothermal <laughs> carrier has perhaps done it better or me, but it's really, when I count, I've come to my, an, a normal average of seven years. Now, by the time you finish a road, seven years later, that's why thicker road looks like it's a small road. The thicker superhighway is already clogged already, up because yeah. people buy so many cars, so the assumptions you used by the time you are doing the project, and we, we, all of us, private sector, government, we have to really think and say, what are we going to do so that from start to finish, we at least do it in three years, you know, and a maximum five, seven years is a long time. But I'm looking at a situation where oil market, some, of, some oil marketers are obviously have some international backing. So why not do a PPP with the government where at least you're able to know this is what we're going to be doing, this is what we're, we're setting up a storage facility here, here, yeah. here, here. How are you guys going to come in and chip in and also help us some kind of a crew? make good on our investment? 
I think uh, PPP is very good. The private public private partnership law was excellent, yeah. but operationalizing it has proven very difficult. Yeah. I've, j I've just given you an example. Um, I know of an oil storage terminal, 110 million liters of diesel. The pipeline wants to get it so that they can convert a few of their tanks back to petrol because we have no storage for petrol. We are three days away from a national stockout of, of, of petrol, yeah. unleaded petrol. Now, to do that, the conversations that are taking place are, t are too long. There's just too much red tape, uh, too much bureaucracy, and you wonder why. And, uh, and if pipeline is empowered, if some if government actually says we will adopt all this storage, if we take Petro City in Konza, mm. if there's another one that's coming up elsewhere in, in inland, I don't, which, which I don't know, all of them should be adopted under PPP framework to be part of the pipeline, to be managed by the pipeline. But what is happening now is that as a private investor, you do a PPP project, but the government does not adopt it. Or the contracts, there's something wrong in the contract. Or yeah. there's a conversation that comes that then delays uh, <coughs> the, the, the adoption of the PPP. I think that, that's the difficulty. The, the difficulty is in the doing, not, not in the, the... The doing is really challenging us, and I think um, that's the way to go. I've seen it defined in policy. I think all of us as players, we, are, we should find a formula to say, why, why is that's it taking us too long? What's, what, why is it taking long to, 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 to execute? And I'm just looking at that from the point of view that obviously one of the things that are leading to lower obviously international crude prices are many countries are discovering why many people are coming to the party. Kenya is one of those countries that are hoping perhaps that their oil is commercially viable. So I'm looking at it if, if and when our oil becomes commercially viable and we have no infrastructure in place, then how then does that come and bite us? at the end of the day. You know, lately I've been saying God has a sense of humor. Yeah. Because I think the low oil prices have sort of slowed, will slow down many people who are drilling. Because yeah. then the economics of drilling uh, or Mandarin. upstream uh, um, are not as exciting as they were when the price was $100 and above of crude. <coughs> but you know, it also buys us time. It buys us time. We who take seven years to do anything infrastructure. <laughs> it buys us time to actually do that pipeline yeah. from, um, from uh, Lamu uh, inland maybe to do the refinery in Isiolo if that's what we want to do uh, to expand the pipeline from Mombasa to finish the standard gauge railway because frankly I worry sometimes if we get the oil from Trukana how will it move from Trukana to the sea how will it move from Trukana to Nairobi, Machakos no, <laughs> uh, roads. no, no roads we don't even have roads We don't have. Uh, it's taking us too long yeah. so I recall we in private sector at one time when President Kibaki the then President Kibaki came to power, people said, declare a state of emergency on infrastructure. We are now saying, perhaps it's time to now say, declare a state of emergency on this slow speed in execution of infrastructure project. Obviously, let me take you back. I know you come back from a manufacturing background. And just looking at it, energy costs translate into manufacturing. Obviously, in the last two weeks, you've seen people, especially a company like Bitco, announce that they're dropping <coughs> prices of consumer. Is that what we should be expecting in this relatively low environment of, uh, of uh, lower fuel prices? Yes, I think uh, manufacturers have no choice but to drop price if you're going to keep demand at the same level. The biggest thing you fear when you're a manufacturer is overcapacity. When yeah. you have a factory installed, but you're only utilizing capacity at a lower level than you expected, say 20% yeah. capacity, because y you have a fixed cost line which, which you're paying for. So I think prices are generally coming down. You've started to see pr prices coming down. But let's be careful. This conversation about pricing should not be driven by people demanding drop the price. The pricing, should, we should leave it to the market system. We are a, we are a market system. Are we over expect them then? Is, is, that, is that the so. case? I think so, but we have to get rid of certain uh, yeah. things that we do. You know, there are certain subsidies we give. There are certain we should leave the market system to work uh, on 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 its own. But I think pricing is generally coming down. Yeah. I've seen even certain circles, transport circles, drop prices, <coughs> so <coughs> so that they're able to get uh, more more volume. travelers, uh, more, more volume. So that that the, it is called the invincible hand. Adam Smith called it. So there's always something that comes uh, to control uh, tempering, uh, expectations. Uh, tempering expectations. And I think um, that, but you know, the biggest cost for a manufacturer is always cost of money yeah, and cost okay. of energy. Cost of energy, a lot has been done. Cost of money, very little is being done when government owes manufacturers still a lot of money in VAT yes. refunds. Mm -hmm. They've advertised in the newspapers, but everybody's looking at their bank accounts this, end of this, end of this month to see. Again, stop talking, do.
I mean, people, we have come to a it level. It's a seven year, because I remember the first conversation of VAT refunds yeah, I had. Yeah, really, that, that, that conversation around VAT refund is making the government look bad. They are, looking, they, are looking, they are looking very casual to private sector yeah. for not really uh, acting on it. They better keep quiet if they don't have the funding. And when they have the money, then to say really? we have it. But if we come to the end of this month and manufacturers and other private sector players, including we in petroleum, don't get our VAT refunds, it's going to be people, there's going to be general depression and disappointment. And it, I think, I suspect, and I know, it is really one of the things that's been making cost of doing business and, 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 and our uh, very, 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 very high, high, high okay. in Kenya. Thank you very much, Poli Kapigala. It's always lovely to speak to you. Thank you for having me. All right. Asana. That's been Poli Kapigala just telling us about the oil industry and some perhaps the kind of expectations that we have, especially now that international crude prices are the way they are. But kind of explains of how infrastructure is playing a key challenge in this, where we can't even store more than seven days worth of fuel to be able to sell across the country. Michael, is there anything you wanted to ask, Poli Kapigala? Yes, well, um, I, I just, uh, a very interesting conversation there, especially just to learn that uh, despite the fact that we think prices come down, there's a fixed cost which is not determined by, you know, the prices uh, elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, that I think was interesting for me. And also the fact that uh, at some point the market will have to control, you know, what happens. Yeah. We, we, we may want to have, you know, make noise about the crude oil prices and all that. But at some point the market itself will just have to level out. And uh, also the, 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 the infrastructure, the part that it plays, it's quite a huge role, eh? Massive, yeah. yeah. Massive. And uh, interesting. Sophia? Yeah, a uh, good conversation. I know, Sophia wanted you, I know you wanted your feel at 70 more. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, we yeah, are the expectant Kenyans. It will get there. Will it? it? We expect that it will get there. Let's see. Because, um, you know, the reason why the price is really coming down is because OPEC, the uh, OPEC, you know, the cartel of oil producing, mm -hmm. exporting countries, Over -producing. They, they are the managers of the global supplies of oil. And they've decided not to manage it because uh, they really are not disciplined anymore. They don't have the market share they used to have, market share dominance they used to have, and barriers to entry. There's been a lot of new oil finds. So because, they, because of that, there's a huge surplus. And yeah. because they've kept the prices low, demand has gone up. If yeah. Demand has gone up. And what we are starting to see, but what we are starting to see is a stabilization of the prices. But to everybody is saying, we are very far away. We are perhaps three to five years away from ever crude oil per barrel hitting a hundred dollars that's what i'm reading in all the research i see yeah. but who can tell what's around the corner anymore nobody can nobody. predict what will happen because even this price drop there is nobody who so who could foresee it so let's yeah. do the best with what we have and um, and also remove the depression and the negativity around uh, uh, price of fuel. Price of fuel in Kenya is very, very affordable. It's affordable. What about our oil fines? Uh, when is that likely to be felt by a common one? Wow, I really, about those? I'm, I must say I'm a downstream person. I, I know about petrol stations and, and pump, but the yeah. upstream side, I can tell you, we, we, we don't even have a road to go where the, the, <laughs> the fuel is. We don't, yeah. we don't have a pipeline going there yet. Good. We don't have a railway a going journey. up there. I, I suspect it will be in our lifetime, but not, nothing near a decade yeah. from where I'm sitting okay. and at the pace we are moving. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks.